So, this is Iceland. Come with me. <laughs> Sitting here, I'm wondering how the teenagers must feel about living here. I'm from Iceland, and uh, it's always cold. It may seem like I'm lying, because, you know, I'm wearing a t-shirt, and you're like, oh, Iceland isn't that cold. But you're wrong, because today is the best day of summer here. So, Thora, what are your first thoughts about living in Iceland? This is the one place that I love the most. I can go visit some other places in the world, travel, but I always want to go home. This will always be my home. Uh, I know you really like Iceland, but are there some negative aspects about living here? Uh, it could be the weather. And also, during the winter, we almost have no sun, and that affects our uh, mentality. Even though I said the weather is uh, one negative aspect of Iceland, it's also what defines uh, one of the many things that defines Iceland. You can wait five minutes, it's raining. You can wait another ten minutes, it's sunny. Then in half an hour, it can be snow. Yep, that's a typical day in Iceland. Many people refuse to come to Iceland because of its horrible weather. I mean, yeah, Iceland is the coldest country in the summer. But do you think the teenagers live happy in that country? Or is the weather a major factor in their discontentment? Single week in May, we had rain during some time of the day, every day in May. That really just makes you sad, sort of. But you don't not notice it until there comes like one sunny day where the weather is like perfect. Then at the end of the day you're wondering, wow, what a great, amazing day. What, what was it? There was nothing like special I did. Nothing uh, that uh, about the people around me. It's just something. And then you realize, ah, oh, it was sunny outside. You just get used to it. But you want to, like it's like this summer, it never came sun. I'm pretty happy in this country. The weather is not the best, but sometimes it's nice just to have bad weather too. Then it's cozy inside. Uh, it's I I get really down sometimes during winter when we don't have any sunlight or if it's the bad weather. Let's see at what age those teenagers started working and which type of work they had to do. Uh, I was 14. Yeah, yeah, spreading papers. 12, 13 years old. It's called Vinnyskolin and it's like a work school. So you get paid for it, but you're learning like working tactics and stuff. I uh, started working in fishing factory maybe two years later. And that's just during the summer. We don't work with school at that young age. My first little job that was acting in a TV show. But my first real job was the, in here in Greenland, the teenager job. I was 12, acting in a show called The Diary. And my first job was just like planting trees and stuff, and it was only for two weeks at the job. And But you got like 40,000. Nine years old. I worked in Sposbele because my parents, uh, they owned it at the time. And I pumped the footballs in a, like a machine for four hours. Every day. I've been working since I was uh, 12 years old. In that place there's a petrol station and a hotel and I work in both of them. Okay, but why working? Why not just spending the vacation just as any other kid in the world? Relaxing. Money because I was I'm going to Spain. Uh, I need money. I'm I will not use my parents money again and I gonna work and the work and pay for myself. Because I was going to another country and play basketball. 
with my team and I needed money. There was uh, another girl in the team that was doing it and my grandmother told me that I could go and you know, sell people papers. I've never expected like new clothes, new items from my parents and stuff. They mailed it to every house like, oh, the so, uh, uh, you can sign for the work school now and you didn't have to but most people did I was waiting to work because I wanted money as a young kid I never got like a pocket money from my parents to go buy some candy and stuff the only money I had uh, up until that point was the money I got in birthday presents like sometimes when you ask your mom if I can get this she sometimes like no you can buy it yourself because like she can't take it from you because it, it is yours i just started doing it because also every my siblings were doing it and also i i like buying things it, i learned to be more independent and also i just uh yeah i also learned to be more responsible about my money because my parents like if i wanted new clothes then i had to buy them on my own because they want me to, te uh, to teach me responsibility so that kind of like forced me to learn responsibility uh, maybe not their mum forcing them, but I think every kid wants to have a bit of money, whether it's to buy numb or whether it's to buy alcohol friendly. Because I need money uh, for school, to travel and just for my future. Oh yeah, it makes sense. But what would they want to do with the money? Would they buy everything with the money? Would they save it? And which things would they buy with it? Oh. PlayStation, TV, computer, the studio monitors, keyboards, and also I'm going to build like my own little studio in my room, but, like day to day basis. Coffee, <laughs> coffee. Mm -hmm. When I'm abroad, I buy a lot of clothes because they're uh, affordable. I did buy, buy this for my first job, and the second thing is on my home screen. I'm f I fish sometimes, so I sometimes buy something fishing supplies. But the thing I don't know, I'm just saving the money for the trip I'm going, the holidays. So I'm going to buy where it, some clothes in Spain. Sixty to seventy process go to my ships. Uh, my biggest expense was probably on a car, but mostly then just on clothes. Sixty percent of all the money I spent on food and some clothes. Uh, I spend one third of it on savings, uh, one third of it goes to my spending spending and then another third goes to charity uh, to rule through my family. Um, my one third that I spend on, uh, well I used to get spent on match attacks and Star Wars action figures, then it moved on to more like PlayStation, you know stuff like that. Now it gets spent on traveling, partying, Star Wars action figures <laughs> and uh, clothes. He must be so addicted to Star Wars action figures, huh? But hey, what do they think about paying taxes? Because that reduces a great amount of money of the actual income. When when you look at the check uh, after the month, uh, what you get paid, and then you look at what you pay in taxes, it becomes like, oh, fucking taxes. We get pissed off if we fi find out like, oh, government, used this much money of the taxpayers money to do something that regards me no uh, in no way if i remember right it's like from 16 you get you get your own personal discount of the taxes each month you get a like specific amount of percentage that you can use to pay less of the taxes but taking into consideration that Iceland is really expensive, do they still think that they earn a good amount of money? I think I do, because the only expensive expenses I have are my education, I pay for my school, my own, I pay for my clothes, I pay for uh, occasional meals when I don't have anything prepared, oil or gas for the car. There's not as much of a spread of wealth. Like there are there 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 are poor people in Iceland, like poor, but there's not like no clean water poor, if that makes sense, or like no access to showers or something like that. Every Icelander has that.
Yeah, like last month I got uh, 400,000 in Icelandic kronas. I mean, if I would be living in Reykjavik, I would not afford it because they're like a small room like this would be probably 200,000. Oof, that's a bit pricey. But have they ever thought about living or working abroad? Yeah, sometimes. Where? Japan. I'm living abroad in Denmark. Uh, it's only for uh, four and a half months. I've also thought of living in Denmark, maybe afterwards and working. Just the thought of being abroad, it excites me. You know, you can get good money in Iceland for working here, but still Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Like maybe somewhere sunnier, like Spain or something. I, I don't plan on ever living or working in Iceland. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Daniel, why? Why do you have so much hate for Iceland? It sounded like that. Maybe it's not, but for me, it sounded like that. Explain. Oh, I'm sorry, I put this video. It's just that that's me interpreting how I feel when I hate things because I couldn't blow this flower. But okay, let's get into this documentary. I'm sorry for the interruption. I, I grew up here, but this place is small, it's isolated from the rest of the world, it's slow, it's it's almost too chilled out in lifestyle, and yes, the weather, the weather does play a factor, but it's not the factor, I could, I could still live here if it was more, if there was more to live in, I could still live here, but the weather's pretty shit still. Okay Daniel, I get you, it's just that for a moment I thought that Iceland maybe would be called a perfect country i know that there's no such thing as a perfect country but maybe just reaching the spot but i guess i was wrong there are more downsides than i thought the weather we are so few the population is so small so you basically know everybody it's just boring you know we're so few we have like only thing people do is like go to the theater or play video games or lack of uh, options in in like entertainment and such you know, everything is expensive. Uh, you know everybody. You can't, you can't know someone without them knowing someone you know. The That's biggest one I've noticed is probably the low population. Like a lot of people that you like accidentally go on one day to learn out later is your cousin. So you <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> the bad thing about Iceland that they already really losing our language. Like kids today are walking somewhere and talking English because they think it's cool. Everything is really expensive. Um, I was thinking about it, but I kind of miss it. You miss the weather of Iceland? A little. Like, I want snow, I want cold, and the fresh air. The weather? If you want to get hot or like get heat, you just go inside and uh, or to the swimming pool or something. Hot tubs really nice. We, Iceland, the people. Go to a shopping trip to another country. It's so expensive here. You know, one of the reasons that led Iceland to be so expensive were the tourists. The thing is, there's not that many people that live here. There's three million tourists a year that come to Iceland. And there's only 300,000 Icelanders. So at the end of the day, the vast majority of people you're serving are tourists. Like, tourism helps the economy a lot in Iceland. Tourism has single handedly saved Iceland from the depression. It's boosted the economy, and now all I hear is Icelanders constantly complain about tourists. And yet they turn around and their whole business is funded by tourists. They hike up prices, hiking their own living costs, and then turn around and complain about the living costs. I think Icelanders need to get in their head that the 3 million tourists that come here a year are 3 million people that fund your lifestyle. And to just highlight every bad story that comes out about a Chinese driver stopping in the middle of the countryside road to take a photo in the middle of the fog and it's dumb. Yes, it's dumb. But I, I've been abroad with Icelanders. One guy smashed a bottle on another guy's head. You don't hear the whole of Mallorca complaining about it. In many cases, tourists don't have respect for locals or the environment. They think sometimes like uh, the nature is just a toilet. They go wherever, wherever they want and do their job. When people like take the prices of normal things to extreme because tourists are gonna come by and then we locals come to the store and oh, I'm gonna get this chocolate. Okay, four thousand kroners or something. 
this comes with tourism, but you're you're in it for the money, and the money dwarfs the problems you guys have. They're not going around dropping, you know, sort of litter everywhere and stuff. Most of them love nature way too much. That's why they're here. They're all nature freaks. They love like the whole environment thing and stuff like that. I couldn't really particularly like. I wouldn't go on a holiday to look at a mountain, frankly. That's kind of weird. I'm not thirty yet. Oh yeah, and don't forget about the imports of goods. Because Iceland is situated in the middle of nowhere, you know? But the tourists uh, began coming more and more after the financial crisis of 2008. In fact, they were the ones who were able to lift Iceland's economy back up. But did the crisis affect them directly? Did they even know there was a crisis happening? I don't know about that. Oh, I don't really know what happened. Uh, thinking back, I don't remember it being like this huge uh, downfall of expenses. I know people who were like for three months basically lived on pack noodles. Everybody was like buying expensive jeeps with loans that are money that they don't own. Uh, building huge hotels uh, with a loan abroad, money they didn't own. My uh, parents were farmers and it didn't really affect them because we actually like sold more stuff on the inflation because it was cheaper for some reason. But um, I'm not sure actually. I think just a lot of people like their parents lost a job so then they have to like, you know, know how it is to struggle. I was here in 2008. But in terms of youth mindset, I'd say it wasn't really changed. Like it was just an economic crash. We didn't really understand what was going on. After the breakdown, many protests were being made asking for change, and with that, they democratized the society. There was even a democratic system to the youth in which their ideas could be taken into consideration in the constitution. I don't think, like, everything, uh, like, exactly what works in Iceland works, works in um, other places, like, everywhere. One of the things that works in Iceland is the unlimited time someone can sit as president. But what do the actual teenagers think about that? But I think it's great when it's eight years. If somebody, they think somebody is working, then they don't really care about changing it, even if it's somebody could be better. And uh, I'm not sure. I mean, I always like the idea of president not getting more than eight years, but also the president is basically just like the British queen. He doesn't do anything. And you have to be able to think about you know, okay, he's done great. He's been doing great for all the time he's been sitting as president. But maybe someone else has something that he didn't. And maybe this one has not something that the old president had. But then you have to feel it, you know, okay, I value this. The president doesn't do anything in Iceland. The president is literally just someone for show. It's, it's like having the queen. Because if that person happens to continually be the right person for the situation that the country's going through over 30 years, then it's probably best for them to stay for 30 years. But if it's only good for them to be there for five years and they stay 10 years, well then those last five years are a waste of time. Another downside that they have mentioned is that Iceland has a small population. It's not that the population is small and tiny, it's just that there are 300,000 people. And how do they feel about that? If you go to the store, then you always meet someone that you know. Around the corner, there's always going to be someone that you're related to or they you know because we're so few. And if you look at the like family trees of all Icelanders, we all basically come from the same, same 40 guys or something. I don't know. For example, if you sleep with some random girl, she could be your third cousin and you just, you just wouldn't know. And that's kind of scary. And that's kind of a freaky thing in Iceland that like everyone, the fact that I guarantee you that if you say someone roughly my age in Iceland, I will know someone who knows someone who knows that person. There are many people that I don't really know, but I know who they are. And I made out with one of my cousins, but I was like, after I found out he was my cousin, I always threw up. Wait, what? But how many of their cousins do they actually know? And how big are their family meetings? 200 people. Like 200 people, is it? Too many to count. Over 100, yeah. Uh, about 35 people plus. I think I know like 40 out of my cousins, but I have like 300 cousins, so I just like, 
they a lot of them know me, so they always say like hi Vider, and then I always have to be like hi you. At least ten, I think. Wait a second. Now I'm curious. Iceland has been setting some regulations to reduce the drug substance and alcohol consumption in youth. But how many people do they know that actually sells drugs? And how fast could they pass me some? Mm, in like four, maybe after, you know, four days, week, something like that. I know like three or four people maybe that distribute marijuana or something. Like 12 or 15. Probably like five minutes. I know some people here that smoke a lot of pot, so I can probably buy some from them. Oh my god, thousands. One second. Is it maybe because your brother sells drugs? Yeah, my brother's drugs. Does your mom know about that? Yeah, of course they know. But she, does, she, she tried to tell, but... Yeah, my brother's not gonna... Ah, uh, that's sad. But what else do they do which is illegal? Drive fast. Drugs. I have illegally crossed the border. I have shoplifted. Stolen from a shop. Mm. Oh, I've illegally delivered 12 babies. I've also illegally removed four tumours. Removed two, no, two appendices. I have steal from a shop and I did get busted. <laughs> we were four guys that did get busted. It, it was so... It did call my mom. I didn't know of it. They have a candy. Just walking home. My mom did call. The, the store was calling me. I was fuck. I tried smoking when I was 15. Now like I've sold you know candy and something. I like went into a bus but I didn't pay for it. You didn't pay for the bus? The only public transportation in Iceland? Why? What did they think about the bus? They're really complicated. But and it, it is what it is, that's all you have in Iceland. Literally, you guys barely have taxis as well. You cannot really depend on the Straito, which is the like the main public transportation thing in Iceland. The only, I think. It's never on time, also because the traffic is not like calculatable and it's extremely expensive and it's like the ways go like they try to cover all the all the space in Reykjavik with so few uh, like ways if I'm going to take straight off from here to Kringland which is takes me like 15 minutes to bicycle it takes me like 25 minutes to take straight off because that one way is going through all Kobo over and then blah, 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 to cover all the grounds. Like there's just a gap in the map so it doesn't go the entire ring road and also the buses are always late and the people are really bitter in there. In the capital city and in the place where uh, these uh, um, big cities are in Iceland, it's all right, yeah? But if you're going out on the country, then it's so expensive. What about God? Do they believe in God or in any religion at all? Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you think most teenagers believe in God? Mm, no, not really. I don't believe in anything. Yeah, for me it's nothing to believe. Just like if you're a believer or something like believe in yourself. For tourism purposes, we like to say we believe in elves or trolls and stuff like that. That's just bullshit. Most people don't believe in God, but still the church is a big thing in Iceland. You don't really need religion to know like what to, not to do and what to do. And it's just a big scam, I think, the church. Now the kids that are one year older than me, go in the fall, in the fall and learn about God until, they, until April. And then to, will they go to a test? If they get the test right, they will be friend friend. That that means like we will always stay with God or something. I do not believe in God. Nowadays, like people are getting a lot less religious and a lot less uh, focusing on like things that you have to believe in and more like what you can prove. And I think Iceland is a really like atheist country, and we like to believe in more like or like to you know think find things that can actually be proven as fact and not just something that you have to blindly believe in. Teenage is not religious. But that doesn't surprise me. That's just a growing trend across the world. Also, Iceland is claimed to be one of the safest countries in the world. Is that true? 
my, my great grandmother got murdered in a flat in uh, Garabai. But apart from that, I haven't heard of any murders ever. Um, my mum was in a bank robbing when Lance Buckley got robbed. <laughs> she was in the bank. Me and my stepdad went and had pills at the uh, gas station across the road and we waited for it all to finish. The bank robbers got caught the next day because they went away in this white van. <laughs> and then someone recognised the white van. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking classic Iceland. But yeah, no. Uh, see, you can't, you can't do anything here. <laughs> I don't ever, like, think about, oh, fuck, there could be someone robbing my house right now if I'm not home alone. But it still happens. There are people that do, like, these fucking absurd things in Iceland. But, but still, like, in Iceland, we leave the... What's it called? Where uh, babies sleep and you can, like, walk them around. That uh, thing, we just leave it outside because it's better for them for the sleep and it's crazy to outlanders because they just see a house and there's a baby sleeping in like like this shit like uh, just outside the kitchen window and that like what the fuck anybody could take it i go out in the middle of the night and take a walk alone and i'm not even scared all right so according to them iceland is certainly safe but did they ever feel harassed in any way? Yeah, I, I mean, I thought a guy was once maybe gonna rape me because he was really like touchy and really uncomfortable, but that's it, I think. No, like he was like, uh, I didn't want to have sex with him. And he was like, oh, please, I don't feel so very good. I think I'm so ugly. And I was like, oh, you're not ugly. And then he was like, oh, please, will you have sex with me? And I was just like, no, I don't want to. And then that happened for like 20 minutes. So then I pushed him. This has been in my life. Like people that judge me what I'm doing and things like that. Yeah, the bullies, of course. Did you ever cry about it? No, I don't. How do you feel about it? Yeah, I know that's normal for all, every country is, but I feel bad about it. My friends are poorly too. Yeah, I talk with friends and everything. About the bullies? Yeah, of course, I talk. And what do they say? Be careful of yourself. Don't listen to them. They're just a bully, they can't do anything. Uh, like during some, you know, parties, you can be sexually harassed. Uh, like in my case, you know, girls grab things and stuff. But we are three friends. We're bullying one other friend, and me and my other friend, Thomas, we're just telling the guys to stop harassing him. I, I was getting bullied. They just ignore me, tell very bad things to me. They like get trying to drink me in the swimming pool then. Oh, but at least there's no discrimination against women, right? Because Iceland is the first country to reach the full gender equality. But that wasn't always like that. Um, so my mom wasn't very good, and my mom got paid 45% less than the man on the, on the desk next to her that did the same job. But now things have changed for good. Yeah, I think like me and my sister get the same, so... Hey, hey, I know you might be thinking, yeah, you, the person or people who are watching this documentary. John, where have you gone? You were here in the beginning of the documentary and you're not here anymore. Well, I am here. You see, I'm not lying. After having heard all of these perspectives on these topics, how do they feel overall about living in Iceland? Not perfect, but it's good. It's a really free country, and uh, like you, you get to feel safe. Have many opportunities, uh, opportunity to uh, work at your own age. Living in Iceland is nice, but the weather is not good sometimes. Iceland is great, but uh, everybody's related, so that kind of sucks because it's kind of incest. I think Iceland is a good country, but they have to think first before they do something. It is, it is a fantastic country, it's my home, it's where I was born, I love it. But there's a lot of things that needs to change. And in order for that change to happen, people need to realise that Iceland's a part of the world and the world is not Iceland. 
So at the end of the day, just Iceland needs to know its place and want to grow, rather than sitting on a pedestal, because it's just we're just being left behind. I don't know what it is. It's like a refusal to leave Iceland. Like they don't want to leave, uh, but by not taking the risk of leaving, even for a bit, you won't see what's out there in the world. And by not seeing what's out there, you think Iceland's it, almost. You can trick yourself into thinking this Iceland is the, the precipice of society and culture and development, when it is so far from it in some cases. Uh, I've liked it, but I'd like to live somewhere else. <laughs> After all of this information provided, we can come to the conclusion that Iceland is not a perfect country to live in as a teenager. Of course, there's no country we can call perfect. But it's true that Iceland is closer than other countries to reaching that point. Finally, I want to thank everybody who accepted being on the documentary, as without them, none of this would have been possible to do. I just can't do anything. <laughs> it's been your boy, Jon Lerlatano Frimonsson. Thank you for watching this documentary. Peace out.